Hello students, I welcome you all for the second lecture of history that we are going to discuss today, Europe and India. Now, so what does it mean when we are talking in context of Europe and India? Whatever changes that occur in Europe had its impact in India. And that is why we need to study about the various changes that took place in Europe. Now, during the modern period, the various happenings in Europe had its important impact on India. Therefore, while studying the period of modern Indian history, we have to study the events happening in Europe during this period. The very first period that we are going to discuss today, my dear students, we are going to talk about the period of Renaissance. Now, the question that may arise so as to what does it mean by the word Renaissance? The word Renaissance means rebirth or revival. Now, what do you understand by the word rebirth or revival? During the medieval period, especially between the 13th to the 16th century, there was a drastic change in the field, in the reformation, religious reform and the geographical discoveries. And these changes brought about or it laid the foundation of modern era. Hence this period is also known as Age of Renaissance my friends. So what does the period of renaissance or the age of renaissance means it means the period which brought about a drastic change in the field of religion in the geography that is the geographical discoveries and which laid the foundation of the modern era and therefore this period of renaissance can be traced back between the 13th to the 16th century this period can also be noted as the period which brought about a transformation from, not mentioned in your textbook my friend, from the medieval period to the modern period. Now these are the important things which you need to remember while we are studying about Europe and India. Now let us understand as to what were the drastic changes that came into this field. Now in order to understand you need to firstly examine the various facts. Now what are these various facts that you need to examine? You need to see as to what it led to. It led to a kind of a tremendous development in the various fields. The most important thing that you need to remember that this reformation or this renaissance was not restricted to a particular religion. It was not restricted to a particular region but rather it spread throughout Europe. Giving you a small story you know whatever said by the king was considered to be the word of God but when the Bible which was initially written in the Latin language got translated into French, into English, into German, there was a tremendous change which brought about the Renaissance in Europe. And as I said that, this Renaissance had an impact even on India. Now the next we are going to talk about, as I said initially if you remember, that we are going to talk about the three R's. One, the period of Renaissance, then we are going to talk about Reformation. So now what is Reformation? Something that was already existing and there was a change that was been brought in it. So for this we need to understand that in this period the art, architecture, the philosophy, the Greek and the Roman tradition it all changed. The reform movement spread all over the sectors of human life. Through knowledge, science as well as different sections of art we can observe the discoveries of reform movement. Especially talking about the art and literature of Renaissance period it depicts the sentiments. Now what is the meaning of the word sentiment? That is the feeling, that is emotions of human being. Literature was produced in the local language. As I said that initially the Bible was written in the local language. But now the Bible was translated. And this brought about not just Renaissance but it also laid the foundation of reformation. Now this reformation as I said that uh, we can take it back uh, to the 1450 during the 1450 AD. Uh, the first printing press was invented. You need to remember this my friend very important that in the year 1450 the invention of the printing press took place at a place called as Germany. 
where in Germany? By whom it was? It was by Johannes Gutenberg. Johannes Gutenberg. So the first printing press was invented in which country? It was invented in Germany. Now, most importantly, uh, what it led to? It led to the discoveries of new ideas, concepts and knowledge. And what happened? It led to reach the, all the sections of the society. As I said, initially the Bible was in Latin language. It was handwritten. But what happened with the invention of the printing press? The invention of the printing press led to a momentum or rather it led to a drastic change in the life of people when this printing press helped and these scholarly people helped in order to bring about a transformation in the European society. Now one such person that you need to remember in the history is Leonardo da Vinci. Now let us talk about sir who was Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. So Leonardo da Vinci uh, was a famous or recognized painter, sculptor, architecture, a person who brought about the feeling or emotions through one of his most beautiful painting which we all at least would have read it in the lower class and which was this painting sir if anybody remembers? Yes? It was a very famous painting that was been made by Leonardo da Vinci was Mona Lisa. Now, Mona Lisa was one of the most beautiful painting and to share more about it as I said that Leonardo da Vinci also portrayed or he also made the beautiful painting of the Last Supper. In the Christian religion, in the community, you will find that when Lord Jesus was going to be crucified, he had his Last Supper with his 12 disciples and you will find the painting of this Last Supper in or at the home of every Christian person. So what happened is Europe brought about a drastic change and I'm telling you this my friend the three important hours again I'm repeating it the theme kafanda what was the first that took place there was renaissance this renaissance led to reformation and this reformation led to what called as revolution so the theme kafanda is the first that we talked about we talked about the renaissance we also discussed about what is religious reform movement now due to this movement, uh, movement the people were being looted as I said that whatever said by the church by the priest was considered to be the word of God uh, the church said that it is not the sun that rotates around the earth or rather they said that it is the sun that rotates around the earth but where is what is the real fact we all know the real fact is that it is not the sun but it is the earth that rotates on the earth. So people in those days because they did not understand what was written in Bible they were being looted in the name of religion and the movement that brought about a drastic change is nothing but it is called as the reformation. So we talked about the three R's as I said that there was renaissance uh, which brought about a drastic change in the life of the people then we discussed about the religious reformation uh, because of the invention of the printing press and now let us go to the next revolution but before revolution let us understand something very important that is geographical discoveries now sir in between the three hours why geographical discoveries that you really need to understand let me make you understand my dear students in the year 1453 AD okay, what happened there was an area a country which was called as Constantinople Constantinople or Constantinople which was the Byzantine Empire presently this country is called as Istanbul now it's a very important story that you need to understand in terms of geographical discoveries what happened in the year 1453 AD Constantinople Byzantine Empire was ruled by the Christians. In this year, this country was attacked by the Ottoman Turks. These Turks, if you look at the word Turks, this means from the people of Turkey, the Muslims. 
Now what happened when this region was being attacked by the Ottoman Turks? They did capture what called as Constantinople. And when they captured what called as Constantinople, the Byzantine Empire, they blocked all the road routes that was between Europe and to the other countries. It was here that a need was felt. What was the need felt? A need was felt for finding an alternative trade route for the European countries to reach Asia because the land route was being blocked. Now, these geographical discoveries were supported by the kings and the queens. Now, as I said that, they started finding out the new sea routes. They started searching the route for Bulgaria, Turkey, Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen and many other provinces. Now, what was the reason, sir? Because, as I said that, uh, a very simple thing, example like, uh, what happens if the child is not eating? What you do is, you stop uh, catering to the need. And once the need is stopped, you start searching for the new routes. Right? So in the same way, what happened here is, when the Ottoman Turks captured what called as Constantinople, they blocked. They did not allow the European countries to carry on the trade with any country. And when they blocked the way, they blocked the passage rather, because that was the only route through which the European people could carry on the trading activity. So when they blocked, my dear students, what did they have to search for? They had to search for the new routes. And it was this search for the new routes that actually led to what called as revolution. Now this is something very interesting which you will uh, surely enjoy. Now when they started searching for the new uh, routes, the land route was blocked. So what was the only means left? Now that was not the age, that was not the time or that was not the period when we had aeroplanes, we had missiles, we had uh, rockets. So they started searching for something very important. They started searching for new sea routes. And that is why when these sea routes were being discovered, it led to what? It just did not lead the people moving from their country to the other country. But rather, this new sea routes led actually to revolution, which I'm surely going to discuss about. Okay? As I mentioned, my friend, we need to remember some important years. The very first we need to remember is 1453 AD. Why, sir, we need to remember? Because it was this year when Ottoman Turks, Turks captured what called as Constantinople, that is the Byzantine Empire, and they blocked all the land routes due to which the European traders were not able to carry on the trade. The next important year that you need to remember is 1487. So now why this year 1487 is important in terms of searching for the new routes? A very important person by name B. Dias, I am just writing it in short form here, it's Bartholomew Dias. Bartholomew Dias, with the help and the support of the king and the queen, wanted to come to India. But rather, he took a long and a wrong route towards. He took a long route and a wrong route, which rather, he coming to India, he reached to the Cape of Good Hope in Africa. Where did he reach? Bartholomew Dias reached. He reached to the Cape of Good Hope, which is in Africa. So, 1453, Ottoman Turks blocked what called as the route to Europe and India, or connecting Europe and India. 1487, Bartholomew Dias, who actually wanted to come to India, rather he reached the Cape of Good Hope. Now, just in simple way to remind you, 1487 plus 5 years, so that becomes 1492. Now what happened in 1492 AD? A person by name Christopher Columbus. He also wanted to travel or he wanted to discover the sea route to India. But rather than coming to India, he again took a wrong passage or he took a wrong journey and where did he reach? He reached to an unknown land which is also called as Hittarto which later 
came to be known as America. Now, sir, who discovered America? It was though Christopher Columbus, he discovered America, but America did not derive its name from the name of Christopher Columbus. Rather, it was the next phase where Amerigo Vespucci reached America and it was after the name of Amerigo Vespucci that America derived its name. We are going to talk about the American War of Independence and then we'll see what happened with the 13 colonies. So, 1453 AD, Ottoman Turks captured what called as Constantinople, Byzantine Empire, presently called as Istanbul. 1487, Bartholomew Dias, who wanted to find a new sea route to India, but rather he reached to the Cape of Good Hope, that is in Africa. 1492, exactly after a period of five years, Christopher Columbus, he also wanted to come to India, but what he did, he also took a wrong route and he reached where? He reached to an unknown place which he thought was India and he called the people there as Red Indians. Uh, 1487, 1492, immediately after a period of six years. So, 1487 to 1492, how many years period is it? A gap of five years and a gap of six years, 1498. Okay, now what happened in 1498? We all are aware with this important year. So why are we aware of this important year? Because it was in this year that a person, again, as I mentioned about Christopher Columbus, he was also a Portuguese traveler whose name was Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama was the first sailor, was the person who successfully reached to the land of India, that is at the port of Calicut. And if you are aware, my dear friends, there is a place in Goa which is named after this Portuguese traveler which is called as Vasco. So what do you understand, my friend? What did these sea routes help for? These sea routes did not just connect it or led them to the discovery of the new countries, but what it led to? It led them to the discovery of the sea, new sea routes. 1453, 1487, 1492 and 1498 is the period which brought about what it brought about reformation change because the people of one country came in contact with the people of other country though initially this finding out of the new sea route was for the purpose of business but slowly and gradually along with the trade along with the business they also started spreading their religion which we'll talk about in detail so as i said that the geographical discoveries led to what it led not just to the discoveries of the new sea routes but rather it also brought about a drastic change now when we are talking about the drastic change we need to understand that it was also the period which brought about intellectual revolution now what is the intellectual revolution the revolution which set a benchmark which rather brought about a total change in the life of the people in Europe. So this change is called as intellectual change where intellectually people did not accept it. As I said, you know, if I tell you, come on dear children, clap, you will not clap. Why you will first question me, sir, why do we need to clap? So what is it? It is intellectual question that you are asking me. But if I do tell same to a small child, clap, he will clap without even knowing about it. So same way, the people in Europe initially accepted the ideology, the theory, the philosophy, the teaching, whatever said by the priest or by the king. They considered, as I said, to be the word of God. So such kind of blind faith existed in what college in Europe. Uh, I told you the story about, you know, uh, it was believed that it is not the earth that moves around the earth, but the king in those days said, it is the sun that moves around the earth. Is it true if I do ask you today? You say, so no, not at all. Because it is not the sun that moves around the earth. It is the earth that moves around the sun. So this was the intellectual revolution in Europe. The movements of stars and planets. You know, if anybody was going abroad, even in India, this kind of belief was there. If anybody was to uh, go abroad, it was believed that it was a kind of a punishment. He might have did a sin in the previous birth. So such kind of uh, belief existed in what called in Europe. The next we are going to talk about the greatest revolution, my friend, that took place in the political system. And when I say the word political system, you need to understand, my dear students, as to what was this political system. As I said that, in all the European countries, especially in England, it was the rule of the king and the queen. And the rule of the king and the queen 
was acceptable. But with the modern period, there was a political change that took place. And what was this political change? There was a revolution that was being brought about. People did not accept the idea or the ideology of what having the king and the queen. The people believe now that they need to have a parliamentary system. People believe that it is not the rule of the king that would lead them to development, but it would rather be a parliamentary democracy. And here it is in England, the parliament democracy began. As I said that, it was though the rule of the king and the queen, the people were not ready to accept the rule of the king and the queen and they wanted what called as parliamentary democracy and if you remember it was this East India Company which came to establish its rule in India. Now taking you back to one of the most important year that is the Bill of Rights R-I-G-H-T-S Bill of Rights in the year 1689 what did it lead sir to? It led restrictions on the powers of the kings and the nobles and it established the sovereignty the control of parliament was established first time in which year in 1689 though we got independence in 1947 but the intellectual revolution took place in Europe in which area it took place in the political system also now very important my dear friends you need to understand that though the Bill of Rights was passed in 1689 it was not recognized by all the countries of the world so in this phase what are we going to talk about? So we are going to discuss about something very very important and that is we are going to talk about American War of Independence. We are talking about my dear students in terms of revolution. The three revolution as I said that we are going to discuss in detail about the three revolution. The American War of Independence, the French Revolution and Industrial Revolution. Right now we are going to discuss in detail about American War of Independence. Now. In order to understand, as I said that, when America was discovered by America Vespucci, people from all over the world started moving, migrating to this country because it was nature's bounty. Means, very beautiful place. And majority of the people who migrated to this place that is in America, they were from Britain or from England. 13 colonies of the Britishers were established in America. Now what happened is various kind of taxes were being imposed on these people. Now because the uh, taxes were imposed on these people, uh, the imperialist country, right, as England took the control of America and it established its colony. Now, it was on the east coast of America. Initially, uh, England had a very uh, nominal, uh, you can say very nominal, is a very small domination that led to oppressive restrictions or taxes on them. But slowly and gradually, the war that England fought against France and the other countries, it started imposing taxes on them. One such tax that was imposed on these 13 colonies was that called as the Tea Act. Now what happened, you need to understand my dear friends, that when this Tea Act was imposed, the people, the natives of these 13 colonies, they laid an attack at a place which is called as Boston. Boston is a port which is in America. Now what did they do? They attacked, that is the native people, dressed up as the English. And when they attacked the ship, when they uh, took over the control of the ship, there were the chest boxes of tea. What did they did? They turned all the tea boxes into the sea. And what happened because of which? Because of which there was economical loss to England. And it was this incident which came to become famous in the history of American War of Independence that is the Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party made an economic loss for the people of England. The people of England had to fight a war with America and these people of the 13 colonies fought a war against their own native country, their own mother country that was England. And this war that was fought between England and America was under the leadership of George Washington. Now, if you remember, George Washington also became the first president of independent America. So when does America celebrate its Independence Day? Just four days back, on the 4th of July, every year they celebrate their Independence Day. Whereas America received its independence on 4th July, 1776. 
one of the most important person that you also need to remember in America War of Independence was Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was a person who drafted what called as American War of Independence. So two people that my friend you need to remember who played a very important role. One, George Washington who led the Army of America and who later on also became the president, the first president of the country and Thomas Jefferson, the head of the committee who drafted the American War of Independence. Thus we can say the American War of Independence proved to be a fruitful one, a useful one in terms of revolution. In the next period, my dear friends, I am going to exclusively talk about the French Revolution and the Industrial Revolution. I hope, my dear students, you have understood what is American War of Independence. Before I wind up, let me provide you with an extra information. We are all aware with what's happened in America, how the patients of COVID are increasing every day, not only in America, Italy, even in India. So America, if you know that a person who is playing a very important role right now, who is the president, is Donald Trump. With this little bit of information, I would like to end this lesson by saying you a thank you. If you like the lesson, my friend, please write it in the chat box in the Google Classroom. Give me your feedback, feel free. And always remember the three important R's. Read the lesson, review it through the form of the online class that's going on, and recap that is read the lesson so when i meet you the next time for the next lecture of history i would like you to read about the french revolution and the industrial revolution of which i'm going to discuss in detail in the next class thank you god bless have a nice day